I apologize if this video has poor audio quality. I am playing with the microphone I have, trying to adjust the recording ability of it. And uh, if that doesn't work, then I'll just have to see if I can buy a better microphone. This video is made today on investing in my 20s. I got a question, could you make a video on how you personally would have invested starting in your 20s and 30s? Would love to hear your thoughts. I like this question a lot. Now, there's actually a big difference in, well, not maybe a huge difference, but the 20s and 30s thing, there's some different factors. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about investing in 20s. I'll leave a blank space on my screen so I can write stuff as I go along with this video to go with what I'm saying. So how would I invest going back to my 20s? Let's start with there. If I go back to my 20s, that would be back in 1995. So I didn't know anything about stock market in 1995 other than what I knew a little bit in economics class in high school. But so to make this more useful, what I would like to say is to take my knowledge and wisdom. I don't know everything, never said I did, did know everything, but I'm gonna take what I've learned from my mistakes and what I do now, if I could go back and be 20 years old with what we have today available to us today in 2024. In 2024, there's so much stuff available to you guys that was not available in 1995. So I'm going to take this advice as if I'm talking to somebody that's 20 or myself if I had to redo at 20 years old in 2024. So for me personally, what I would have done straight out the gate, maybe around 18 or whatever, I would have went into the military. In real life, I did. I joined the U.S. Army when I was 20 years old, ironically but no regrets for that. So I would, and why, hold on, I'll explain. This is options people need to think about. The military to pay for college, that's why I went in the military to go in there to pay for my college. If you can afford college or have a scholarship or whatever, then consider trade schools or other colleges and make sure you do your research in what you could do when you go to college. That's what I would invest in, invest in education. So my way of investing in education is I had to go in the U.S. Army to pay for my education. I didn't find out what I wanted to do in trade school until I was actually 29 years old. And I'm in aviation. Now I went to trade school for two years. I'm an aviation, A&P mechanic. I have an A&P license. You can look it up and I'll put links. And it pays well and uh, there's some, obviously there's pay ranges all over. But trade schools do well. College. My wife has a PhD, so we got both sides of that here. And then third, emergency fund. If you got cash in your pocket, you can put food in your stomach. Fourth, open up a Roth IRA. Learn what a Roth IRA is. Don't put it off. This you need to make priority. Open it up and fund it as quick as you can. This is this is when you really need to be frugal, in my opinion, at this point right here. And fund this Roth IRA, cut back on everything but the essentials. And right now in 2024, if you're under the age of 50, since I'm talking to 20 year olds, you can put $7,000 into it for one year if you meet the requirements. Again, I'll put links for everything below the video. But put $7,000 in it, and then I'll explain to you what what I would do personally if it was me buying in this later in this video i will get into details on on assets okay that will be in this video and you will not leave this video not knowing what i'm talking about number five if you have a job that has a 401k and they match part of that 401k take the max that they match of that 401k take it that is money that the company is paying you to you know so take the match always take the match in the 401k the next thing on my list is 10% of your income you need to invest into your future self. You hear a lot of people say pay yourself first. Well, that kind of goes along with this. Pay yourself 10% of your paycheck. No matter if you make $100 a week or $1,000 a week or $2,000 a week, whatever that check is, when you get a paycheck, take 10% of that bring home pay, put it inside a regular brokerage account, not the Roth IRA, but a regular brokerage account. The reason I say that is because you're in your 20s and we'll, I'll show you later why well, that's important. Fund your Roth IRA and then after that, 10% of all your checks that you make going forward, pay your future self, 
put it in a regular brokerage account and I'll show you what to invest in that and that'll be very good for you okay and then number seven on my list that I would have done differently which I did have a house actually I bought a house in my first house I bought was in 1999 when I was 23 but before I turned 24 years old 23 years old what I would do differently is I'd buy a house in a better location and don't overpay for a house I know that's kind of chuckles right now when the market in 2024 I always said which is hard to do for some people to understand to not have your rent or mortgage more than one week's pay and I know some people go rents high I get it I understand all that but it's important because rent should and has usually always increased over time and some people if you if you go bounce around then rent's good but if you go stay somewhere for a while buy the buy a house that doesn't make you house poor that you have plenty of extra money with because eventually you can move out of that house and rent it out if you buy a cheap enough house that you can get a good return on the investment don't go buy an expensive house you can barely afford and renters not gonna pay you seventeen hundred dollars a month or whatever in your area look what the rent is in your area buy a house that you could rent out for that and make and cover the cover the price of a house plus any maintenance and stuff like that along the way if you want to move out of it in two three or four years so that's why I buy the house that is an asset if you use it correctly a house can be a liability by the way okay and then the next thing um, is if you're getting into a relationship if you're not in one and you're looking for a husband or a wife or whatever the situation is the invest in a good partner in life a lot of us make mistakes especially in the beginning make here's my quick two cents make a checklist learn, learn yourself first invest in yourself and learn who you are and then once you know who you are then you can seek someone out based on a whole bunch of checklists that you make and as long as you meet their checklist and you meet and vice versa then y'all can have a strong thing because two people working for the same goals is very powerful no matter what your income level is you can be a power couple if both of you have good communication and when you're not around each other in each other's presence you pretend there are in your presence none of this micro cheating so anything you text or say or anything when they're not in your presence you pretend there are in your presence and you treat them with respect and if both of you do that y'all have a solid you should have a solid marriage and a bond and you have the same goals and you both are putting forth effort to meet those goals you will get there faster and with and with more happiness in life that is the next thing I would say invest in a good relationship not just any relationship but a good relationship and then um, then that would set me up to fully retire at uh, 40 to 45 years old and yes if you're 20 years old and you do what I'm gonna show you here coming up 40 45 shouldn't be a problem unless you hit a lot of storms in life but that goes back to the emergency fund you need to have in place throughout your whole life time that's something else I would tell myself or told myself when I was younger time time is something I would invest in myself we are not guaranteed tomorrow other than the part where you're getting really frugal to buckle down to fully fund that Roth IRA what you need to do is you need to set aside time to enjoy life while you got your health and you got whatever your friends family or by yourself or whatever you need to take time to enjoy life you want to look back and be like I got to do the things I enjoy whatever it is you enjoy to do you find out who you are and you go enjoy time invest in time in yourself enjoy the journey and then another thing I would have told myself invested some more knowledge in myself when I was in my early 20s and even now some people don't even realize this when you go to work I don't care if you're a TikToker or a YouTuber, social media, or some kind of influencer, or, or even an entrepreneur, or if you are a nomad and you drive across the country and you live in the back of a van. It doesn't matter. Or if you're a CEO. When you're giving up time and you're selling your time to do something to make you money, then you're literally selling time, which is the most precious thing we have. It's more precious than any metal or any kind of material thing there is. So you're selling your time for money and money so you can buy your house you can buy your overpriced car you can buy your whatever you want to do you need to learn to get a mindset in the beginning you will have to unless you're born with a silver spoon in your mouth you will have to sell your time for money and the idea is to buy assets to you can flip that around 
and then your money is actually making you time. Let me explain if you don't get that. You're selling your time, whether it be skill set or whatever, and then you're making money, and then later you can, as you go along, you're investing in assets that I'm gonna show you, and those assets will start paying you to replace your job. Then when you got enough money coming in, which is not that hard actually, to replace your job, then your money is giving you time. You need to learn that mindset when you're in your early years or later years, and then get there. So going back to the school, that reminds me of selling your time. You need to make yourself marketable, so invest in making yourself marketable. Go to school, get a trade, get something. I have a trade, I have a license through the FAA, and nobody off the street can come in and just take my job. I have a license with a skilled trade through the FAA. And then my wife has a PhD, so not just anybody off the street can come in there and take and do exactly what she does. So make yourself marketable, and then that's another thing you invest in. All right, now let's get into the actual assets. Okay, let's start with the Roth IRA. I can't, I'm not a financial advisor, so I can't tell you to do this. So I'm telling myself, do this, okay? You're, you got your $7,000. The younger you do this, the better you will be. The time is your friend. So you got your $7,000, and what did I say put it in? A lot of people will tell you to put it in the overall market or the SP500, whatever. And that's what you got right here, the Vanguard 500. This is what 7,000, since 1985 to 2024, as far as I can go back. So that's 39 years. So in 39 years, and you're like, 39 years? Yes. The Roth IRA, you can't pull the money in. You cannot pull your gains out of a Roth IRA without penalty until you're 59 and a half years old. So that's why I said a one-time investment when you're in your early 20s, set it and let's roll with it and then when you get closer to 60 you'll see you sitting on millions of dollars unless something really happens bad in america but i'm gonna show you okay so if you just about as slow steady that people says wins the race the only race that wins wins is in the uh the uh fiction books in, in the uh kindergarten class because in real life we will use the tools that we have available to us in 2024. so here's the sp500 if seven thousand dollars in that in the last thirty nine years turned into four hundred eighty thousand, that is a big return. But if you use the SP five hundred on steroids with SSO, which is a two times leveraged SP five hundred, it has the same companies. It's just leveraged two times. You put seven thousand in there, you're sitting at over three, almost three, yeah, three and three quarters million in the last thirty nine years. If you use the Nasdaq one hundred. On steroids, QLD, NASDAQ 100, two times leverage, 7,000 becomes over 1 million and 100,000. It's very volatile. We'll get into that in a second. If you use the QLD and the SSO, which is the NASDAQ and the SP500 together, blended 50 50 and rebalance it once a year, you come up with $4.7 million from 7,000. Now, of these, what would you rather walk away with? Now, again, the next 39 years may not be the same, but going back 39 years, when the market has a pullback on average every 40 years, you went through several bull markets, several bear markets, several politicians, several wars, several uh, Federal Reserves with interest rates. You went through a lot in the last 39 years to learn from. So going through all those cycles, look at where you're sitting up. So the next 40 years, shouldn't be much different. So it's to go through more presidents, more politics, more wars, more bear markets, more everything. But the NASDAQ and SP500, if you don't know, the companies, when they don't meet the criteria, they get kicked out and the other ones get put in. So it's not like you're buying the same 100 companies and hope they do good for the next uh, 40 years. No, the companies don't meet the criteria. They get snatched out every year or whatever and get replaced with something else. So it's awesome. No one stop individual risk. That's very awesome. So how do you do this? Come up here, Portfolio Visualizer. You can play with it. I'll put the link below. And because it's leverage, you set it up like I got right here. Screenshot this page. Leverage ratio, you want to set it at 100, debt interest 3, and then 1985 as far as we can go back here. Uh, 2024, 7,000, adding no more money. One time, 
$7,000. And then that's what I have, the portfolio. This is the ticker symbol that represents the simulated technology. And I can show you that this tracks it pretty well with the current SSO QLD. If anybody wants, I can do a video on it. But this video is already long enough. Uh, trust me, I look at this stuff before I talk about it or put my own money in it. And yes, I do have my money in the NASDAQ right now through the three times leverage, but that's another story. That's not a buy and hold thing. So that gives you your um, Roth IRA. And then every year, like I said, don't forget that part, it's very important. It doesn't have to be on January, it doesn't have to be in June. Whatever month that you wanna stick to every year, you go through and rebalance it. When I say rebalance it, that means inside of your Roth IRA. You don't pull your money out into your bank account, you get penalized. But inside of your Roth IRA account, if you don't understand that, read up on it, call your brokerage firm, brokerage firm and ask them or whatever, ask me and I'll tell you how to do this. So you go have two different ETFs. These are ETFs. One's be QLD, one's be SSO. They go get out of whack. And once a year you go in there, one's gonna have a lot more value than the other one. So you sell one and you add to the other one because you're not adding any more money to this. You 7,000 stays in there, but it's gonna grow. And several years it's gonna grow a lot. And then you go take it and you go sell some and you go rebalance it out. And rebalance it out once a year. You don't got to worry about it once a year. So 40 times if you do it for 40 years. And that's it. And get your mind in check because these little hills right here look little. But trust me. You'll see money go down and some people can handle it. My wife lets me handle all the stock market stuff because she doesn't want to see the day-to-day -day moves. So anyways, like on paper, the stock market moves, it, your money moves a lot. But you got to ride out the cycles and know that the overall market goes back up over time. That's what you got to know. Now that now the NASDAQ got hit hard with that dot-com bubble. And it look how long it took it to get back up there 20 years later. So that's why I said don't hold just all the NASDAQ. Rebalance it out. Not for a buy and hold. You don't want to do that. Now let's get to adding 10% of your income to a portfolio. I don't know what you make and I cannot put in a number for every 20 or 30 year old because some people don't have a job or some people make a lot more money than I make. So I don't know what your 10% is. Say you need $50,000 a year and you bring home enough money to where, oops, not 4000 You bring in enough money to where $416 is 10% of your monthly income. And you can put that in every month. That's 20 years, 2004 to 2024, okay? So right here would be 1.8 million. So 50,000 times 25 is 1,250,000, okay? So what you could do at that point in 20 years, think about this, if you're 25 years old, 45 years old, you keep at Now, I know you're not going to make the same amount every year. We can talk about that. So whatever you're at at that time in life, and you see your account get above that, you've got, oh, ding, 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 I can start to get ready. Don't go quit your job yet, but you can sell this stuff, pay your taxes on it, and then we can build a portfolio to pay to replace your job. And once you get that money flowing in, understand how that works, then you can quit your job. And you can quit way before a lot of people, you retire a lot younger than a lot of people do by doing what I'm showing you. So now that you understand that, if you don't ask questions below, and then you understand. That's your ticker symbols right there, QLD and SSO. Blend them together and let it roll out. You sit in this Vanguard SP500, you're gonna be working until you're getting so security if it's still there, you'll be working until you're in your diapers again <laughs> when you're old. So I do not have affiliate links with anybody or try to sell you anything on my channel. I do advertise the fact that my wife writes resumes and rents out the condo, but I don't push stuff on my people. But so what I'm going to say is the next part of this video, if I'm talking to somebody that's young or anybody especially older getting into this part, this my opinions, do what you want. Me, I want safety number one and then income number two and I want my income to increase. So once, this is the hardest part actually, growing your money is 
freaking simple. Once you realize to quit overthinking it, it's very simple. And you learn that volatility is in the markets and you gotta ride it out as long as you have not individual companies because some will never go back up. But anyway, this website is Simply Safe Dividends. Yes, they charge you to use their program. Because I don't know about you, but I don't work for free either. So I go to work, I get paid for my skills, and they got skills, and they're getting paid for their skills. So if you can afford it, you can, you can't, whatever. Me, if I'm sitting on millions of dollars, we will, we will be, and I'm living on dividends, paying a couple hundred bucks for somebody that has a great track record to give me a dividend score, it's a no-brainer. That's just personal, my opinion. They show their scores and they show, or you go on the website, look at them, whatever. And they show their previous scores. They don't hide anything. Like some people only go back, don't go back at all or go back on a couple months like Seeking Alpha and whatever. They go back, I believe, pretty much and show you all their changes with their scores and they give you why and all this stuff. <clears throat> anyway, so when you're picking out companies to buy in your, my opinion, in your portfolio of retirement, Never buy more than 5% of your portfolio inside of an individual company. Now, it's one thing to get an ETF, like Charles Schwab has a, a dividend growth ETF, which is really good. But if you had a $1.5 million portfolio and that's all you had, and you wanted no more than 5%, so you wouldn't put more than $75,000 of a company in there to limit some risk, unknown risk. Like right here on our little sample page, so 70 safe score. On AV. So if you was to buy AV, you would buy no more than seventy-five thousand dollars of AV. That's just here. Now, the score does not mean it's a buy. Okay. Now they talk about it could be overvalued or whatever here. You know, read whatever you want. But I like to use two different um, programs. I, I've used the free. Pro I mean, not free. I used a free trial with this once to see what it's about, but I haven't paid for it because I am doing something aggressive to grow my account, not dividends at the moment. I do currently pay for this program. It's called Fast Graphs. Um, well, part of it's clipped off the little thing here, but anyway, it's Fast Graphs, and I pay for it. And so, using that one website I showed you is Simply Safe Dividends, and this, if both of these were the same package, it would be freaking bomb it'd be awesome but anyway they're not so this one's cheaper and I pay for it to look at stuff to see if it's overvalued or undervalued that's what I use it for use the other one for safety I use some of this for safety and whatever so in a nutshell when I don't get my uh, dividend picks off of YouTube I don't get my dividend company picks off of Seeking Alpha or Reddit meme stocks none of that stuff I like to save my money and make my money grow so when I look at individual companies, if it's an individual company, I look at the earnings, I look at the free cash flow, and the dividend track record based off of the earnings, and importantly, the next one or two year out forecast, and see how good the analysts have been forecasting of that company. Because, yes, we learn from history, but we want to see what their projections are going out forward, because that's what the whole name of the game is going forward. And then if I look at a REIT, I look at the funds from operations to see if it's the dividend safe and covered. If I'm looking at, say, uh, uh, MLP, uh, Limited Partnership, I'll look at the operational cash flow and stuff like that. Just real quick on a limited partnership, they're taxed a little different on most of those. And so if you're inside of a Roth IRA with that, you might get taxed in a Roth. So I don't, wouldn't put that inside of a Roth. I put it in a regular brokerage account. So here's AV that was on that Simply Safe right here. And this is it on the chart. So without going through a whole long and more long of a video to show you this, but quick glance, I can tell you exactly what I'm looking at, but you may not if you've never seen this. This is not my product, I'm not pushing it. The black line right here is the price action, the price line. The blue line is showing right here, the, the blue, the normal PE ratio that people have been paying for this company based off of the earnings growth. The green is the earnings. At the bottom, it talks about the earnings at the bottom. So you can see the greens, green heel, the earnings are growing, and then they, right here at the bottom, negative 19% down, and then going back up. So that's why this blue and orange line are moving. The blue is more like a discount line, but the blue, I mean the orange, excuse me, tired. It is four o'clock in the morning, 
my time and I worked night shift. I just got off work a couple hours ago and I'm tired. Anyway, the R's line is right here. You can pause it, well, you probably can't read it, but it's the gross multiple of 15 on most things. And then the normal multiple right here has been actually been a discount most of the time. But going back to what they said about Simply Safe about this being probably overvalued. Well, if you look at it, the price action is above the blue, so a quick glance it is. If you zoom in at a shorter time frame, it's definitely overvalued compared to what has previously been paid for. And that's how I use this right here. So another example, T. Rowe Price. Their uh, earnings had fell and the price action has fell. And they're now, if I can get that off the screen, their dividend is 4.46 right now. They have a good dividend history and they got the white lines are dividends. You see the spikes that is not dividend cuts or anything like that. That is special dividends they've been paying out to their shareholders. They have a good track record and you can make money with this company and passive income as well. So let's say, oops, shorter than that. So right now, if you go off the blue line, it is right below where the average person paid. So it'd be, I wouldn't want to buy something necessarily in a downward trend, but if T. Rowe Price was given the blessing by Simply Safe dividends and their earnings look like it was going to grow and their price was below the fair value and not to forget the free cash flow. Yes, the free cash flow is the green now. I just changed it from here. It's covering this dividend. Then everything to me looks like it would be safe to put in my portfolio if I was built, building an income portfolio if I wanted this. And I know a lot of people want a high yield, but high yield comes a lot more risk on some things. And NAV depreciation, share price depreciation, all this other stuff that I don't want. Because I want our money to grow even in retirement. Because we're trying to build a trust fund up for our children. So we can leave that on and start leaving that to a fiduciary. Speaking of which, if you get to this point at some point, you don't feel like picking individual companies or ETFs and you don't feel good and comfortable about it and it's risky, please reach out to your broker's firm and talk to a fiduciary. Yes, they charge money too because they don't work for free, but they'll manage your money for you and you talk to them about your goals if you already made this millions but you want to put it in something passive so you're 45 years old and you never want to run out of money the rest of your life. They can talk to you about doing that. And I don't know what they will tell you and how they manage it. I don't know. Here's another one that I've talked about before. Hess midstream. It pays out 7.3% yield. But again, I still wouldn't put more than 5% on portfolio in there. And it looks really well. Um, so they've got big rollover to operate on operational cash flow. You know, you have to go to their website because it's a limited partnership you may be taxed the normal income or whatever on that ordinary income so watch my videos on when I do a individual company stock and you'll see how to use this a little bit better and what I'm looking for because I use I would use stop losses on my dividend income companies and I would not put it in place right away I would buy I did a video on that but I would buy it undervalued and if if it ever because sometimes they don't go back up. but if it got overvalued again then I place a stop at where I bought it that way I can just make sure I don't lose anything along the way if something happens in the market over that individual company thank you for watching my channel and thank you for subscribing to my channel and thank you for sharing my videos and thanks for the comments if you've done those things I greatly appreciate it I'm hoping that this video will help somebody out I know it's long it's taken me several days to actually keep piecing it together and uh, all that. But either way, I'm doing it because I'm trying to help somebody out. And thanks. And um, questions or anything else you may want to see, ask below. And have a good day and go meet your goals.